Welcome to another edition of Green is Good, and we're so honored to have with us today Frank Marino. He's the Senior Corporate Environmental Health, Safety, and Sustainability Manager at the great brand Raytheon. Welcome to Green is Good, Frank. Thank you, John. Thank you. Hey, Frank, before we get talking about all the great sustainability initiatives that you have going on at Raytheon right now, can you share a little bit of the Frank Marino story and how did you end up in this position? And was this something that was always part of your life or did you get inspired uh, in college or what happened and how did you end up in this great position that you have at the, at the great brand Raytheon? Well, I'd say I'd say, John, it started early for me. I, I just always had a uh, an ethos for the you know protection and respect of the environment. I guess I'd say uh, I was in college in the '70s, so the environment was kind of just working its way up. Uh, the EPA was formed in 1970, so uh, Love Canal and some of those things had an influence on all of us in society at that time. And uh, you know, I just call it, kind of followed that that ethos, if you will, um, to. Uh, you know, protect the environment. So I worked in the wastewater business. I worked for companies and handled hazardous waste to make sure we handled all that properly. And uh, early on, I worked in the high-tech industry for computers, and then I uh, I moved over to Raytheon Company that had a very diverse background in, you know, aircraft and appliances and government and defense. And um, it's it served me well. If, uh, I've, you know, been able to um, apply all my skills. Uh, How long every- have you been at Raytheon? I've been uh, at Raytheon for 25 years. Wow, that's awesome. That is just awesome. And and um, for our listeners out there, what what is Raytheon's uh, core business, Frank? Just so our listeners can get a little bit of an understanding of what Raytheon does. Yeah. So I mean, our core business is government, government and defense. Mm-hmm. Um, we make a uh, a lot of tools for the for the warfighter out there. You know, sensing tools. Uh, surveillance, command and control, communications, and we're also into um, cybersecurity Mm. uh, in a broad range of products in that area. Right, right, right. Yeah, I just saw recently you guys bought a company in cybersecurity or something like that, right? A a software company, WebSense or something like that? Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and cybersecurity is big business now. Every You can't open or, or read a newspaper or turn on CNN or another major news channel without seeing some breach going on at a corporation or a governmental entity or uh, something like that. It's becoming sort of just part of ubiquitous and part of our, 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 our news flow. Exactly. I mean, data integrity, as you would imagine, in our line of business has always been part of our DNA, if you will. So it, yeah. it's a natural fit. So let's, you know, given that you're in defense and cybersecurity, and, and now you just mentioned data integrity, let's get into what's going on in sustainability and how that ties into your core businesses and why sustainability is good for business. Can you explain how you have, and your colleagues at Raytheon have made sustainability good business and how it further uh, shores up and strengthens the core brands in defense and in uh, cybersecurity and all the other important things that you're doing at Raytheon? Sure. I mean, we've had a, um, you know, an energy uh, conservation program, you know, since the 70s here at Raytheon. And so, you know, we just think that uh, good environmental health, safety, and sustainability is just good business, right? So if you conserve energy and you conserve water, you use all your natural resources effectively, um, you're just running your business more efficiently, right? It makes you a better business. Right. So it, it's really the right thing to do is the way we look at it. One of our mantras at Raytheon is it's really the right thing to do. So people will ask, why are you doing this? Well, it's, it's the right thing to do, right? We're, so we're conserving energy all across you know, our buildings, in our IT infrastructure, uh, in our manufacturing processes. Um, we, we're conserving water. We, we run some facilities in water-scarce areas, and we're particularly sensitive about that. Uh, we try to minimize what we send to landfill or incineration we have um, really mature recycling and composting programs so that we're, we're actually moving towards zero waste in a number of our facilities across the country. So, so as, a, as a macro theme, Frank, EH&S is part of the DNA of Raytheon. Exactly. So when we look at a, you know, a profit and loss, we, we show yeah. what kind of value we can add to the business bottom line exactly. So when people, you know, when people push back in, you know, 10 years ago, eight years ago, you know, even still a little bit, I hear it, but not as much as we did back in 2002, three, four, and five, that, oh, to be green costs us more money. You just shake your head and say, just pure hogwash. 
Exactly. Exactly. We can we can you know clearly demonstrate that uh, doing the sustainability initiatives that that we have uh, identified here has has added business to our uh, business value to our business. You know, I have a slide here in front of me, part you know, showing your goals, your 2015 goals. I mean, it, there's not. It doesn't seem like there's any part of your business that you're 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 that you're not being sustainable in. I mean, you have from like you, like your shows on this slide here: recycle paper, renewable energy, green buildings, um, water. Uh, water use, fleet efficiency, you're touching everything. And even in desi- designing for sustainability, you're trying to touch everything you do in the supply chain. Right, exactly. And, you know, we feel uh, there's a couple things that have happened in the last several years. Is, is One is that the focus has really shifted from the, from the air and water and land to really a product-focused hmm. uh, requirements, particularly overseas. So for that's the reach in the Rojas and so on. And so we're really uh, we're really putting in some. Uh, we have a global substances program that we run, and that really looks at all the materials that contain in our products to be sure that we're in compliance, so they can be marketed um, globally. Uh, so that's been a bit of a shift, and we're you know we're bringing out those sustainability concepts into our design of our new products. So these are 2015 goals. Share a little bit with our listeners some of the big wins that you've had. You know, these are goals you made years ago. Now you've uh, talk a little bit about the successes that you've had achieving these 15 goals, the ones that you would like to share with our listeners, Frank. And then talk a little bit about your next round of goals and how you're furthering stretching the the company and and how you're creating uh, really the sustainability journey at Raytheon. Right. So, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of wins we've had, John. We've reduced what we send to landfill incineration. We initially set a goal of 25%. Uh, we, we upped that goal to 35%, and now we've gone to 56% of uh, materials wow. that we've diverted from landfill and incineration. So we're proud of that. Uh, we take all those recyclables, and we also do lots of composting. So in our dining centers, we'll divert uh, mm. food waste. From the uh, from the landfill or incineration to composting, so we're really we're really happy about that. Hmm. Um, you know, a small one may be you know recycled paper. We uh, we were using um, some virgin fiber paper in many of our copiers, and we set a goal to to get to 100 percent of uh, 30 percent recycled paper in all our all our uh, copiers that folks use around the company. We've achieved that goal, so that's uh, that's been another win for us. So that closes the recycling loop, if you will. Wow. Um, when you look at, you know, all the things that are recycled, if you buy recycled paper, it just makes sense, right? It's the right thing. To right, do. right, right. And secondly, we brought in the supply chain folks, and I think that's where we want to uh, focus next as well, because when you look at the footprint of a company, the entire footprint of a company, mm-hmm. the environmental footprint, you really have to consider the supply chain, right, the entire value chain. So I think that's part of the direction where we're going with our next set of goals, um, we're, we're just in the uh, in the midst of setting our 2020 goals in sustainability. So how do you do that? How do you guys, um, how do you sit with your team and get your colleagues, and how are those goals created, and how far do you push yourselves? Like, which ones do you know are layups, and which ones do you know stretch, and how do you find the right balance, Frank? Because I find that such a, the process is so fascinating, and brands are so different. I'd love for you to share with our listeners um, a, a little bit on how that process really works. Sure, yeah, it's an interesting question. Uh, John, we call that the, the le- what's your level of ambition as a company, right? So in other words, are you comfortable? <laughs> how much do you want to stretch, right? Right, um, right. Set, can you set a goal that you don't know how to get to yet? Right. Uh, so we're having a lot of those internal discussions. But we also, we worked with a third party this year to establish what we call a materiality assessment, which mm. is where you, uh, we talk to a bunch of stakeholders inside the company, uh, 50 folks in various disciplines, and we pulled all that input together. We did some benchmarking with outside companies. And then we determined, uh, we put together a scatter diagram. When we look in the upper right of that quadrant and we see what are the, what are the, the uh, items that are most important both to Raytheon and to our stakeholders. And then we focus our goals around those, John. So that's just where we are. We're just now completing our materiality assessment. So, uh, again, some of these are, sc- are going to be the same that we've had uh, in the past in our 2015 goals, and these are going to be 2020 goals. So many of those are still important to us because when we look at our footprint as a company, energy use is a big part of our business. So energy is still there. Greenhouse gases are still there. Uh, 
we want to reach out to the uh, supply chain. We want to look at supplier performance and su- sustainable sourcing, things like that. Design for mm. sustainability cost is still there. Um, we're, we're going to coin a kind of a new term for us is going to be called eco-manufacturing, which is where mm-hmm. we want to really zero in on manufacturing and make right. sure we're, uh, we're doing all we can in terms of sustainability. I love it. And for our listeners who just joined us, we're so honored to have with us today Frank Marino. He's the Senior Corporate Environmental Health, Safety, and Sustainability Manager at Raytheon. To learn more about Raytheon and all the great things they're doing to make the world a better place, go to www.raytheon, R-A-Y-T-H-E-O-N, E-O-N.com, Raytheon.com. Frank, talk a little bit about, I know... Um, you and I were chatting offline a little bit before we uh, started the show. Talk a little bit about one of your more exciting programs that you wanted to share because it touches sustainability, cybersecurity, data protection, your e-waste recycling program, which has been a huge success at Raytheon, and it was headed up by you and some of your colleagues in Texas. Right. Yeah, so that was our e-waste program, John. We set a goal to have... Uh, eco-responsible e-waste management, 100% eco-responsible e-waste management. So that's end-of-life electronics. Right. And it's really important to us. Uh, we, we set out three tenants when we started out. Data integrity, of course, is very important. Uh, environmental protection, and then we wanted to uh, have robust financial returns. So we felt there was some value to be harvested out of the e-waste. And that's been a very successful program. We, um, we, we did an RFP. We selected a, an enterprise supplier. And we, uh, we we put this test, you know, for the supplier, and uh, we're very, very happy with the results. Uh, we uh, The supplier is uh, East Stewart certified, which ensures that their, their workers are protected, that no e-waste is going to be inappropriately uh, exported to uh, developing countries. So we really feel it's kind of the right thing to do. In other words, it's, again, it's back to our that ethos of the right thing to do. So it's, it's handling our, our data um, properly. When we have hard drives, for example, that we can't uh, sanitize properly, we shred them to a, right. to a specification. And uh, so we're ensure that you know, our data and some of our customers' data, which may be on our hardware, is properly protected. So we've been very, very happy with that program, John. And, and so you've, 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 you've achieved the goal of data, in, data integrity, you've protected the environment, and there's been good financial returns, robust returns for Raytheon in that good decision-making process. Exactly right. Wow, what a great win. You know, it just sounds like a simple you know, question, Frank, and it's probably more complicated than I'm making it seem, but I, you know, this weekend even we open up the papers and we're reading that the government's having breaches. And as you and I know, there's two ways to have a breach. It's, one is through malware and, and, and you know, you know uh, corrupted software. And the other one, as you're pointing out, is data that's in, in, encapsulated on the hardware that needs to be um, recycled at, at its natural end of life. How come the government isn't following Raytheon's model? How come the U.S. federal government and some of these divisions that are going through these massive breaches that just even in the last two weeks we've read about, why aren't they just looking at your kind of model and saying, hey, we'll look at their protocol and follow that? Is that am I making it sound too simple? Uh, no, no, I don't think so, John. Um... I, I think the issue is, uh, you know, one with the hardware, particularly in today's environment, we're going to solid-state devices. And so those are the yeah. tablets and the iPhones that we all have yeah. today. And those are particularly difficult to sanitize mm. in life, particularly if they're not operable. So they have right. to be shredded to a really small particle size in order to protect that data properly. Got it. So, so that, you know, that's important. I think some of the breaches you, you're referring to, John, are more in the active, you know, in the data server environment versus yep. the end of life. But certainly yeah. the, uh, the end of life uh, electronics is a, is a big area for making sure that you take care of business as far as your, your data integrity. And you've had a big win at Raytheon and hopefully other corporations and hopefully other organizations, whether they're government or corporations, follow suit because you've proved that, again, you could, do, you could do the right and sustainable thing. And it's part of your DNA at Raytheon, as you pointed out earlier. But it also can produce great returns while achieving your goals of environmental protection and data integrity. Exactly. 
exactly. That's right. awesome. What else? You know, what else is um, going on that you're excited to share with with our listeners? I know you and I talked a little bit earlier, and I read a little bit about your your lean programs and things of that such. What you know? What other things are are, are examples of sustainability adding business value that you're doing at Raytheon? Would you like to share with our listeners today, Frank? Yeah, so we, you know, we have we we firmly believe that we have some uh, employee engagement programs. One of them is called Sustainability Star, where it works to educate our employees about sustainability and how they can help us achieve our goals. Because we really believe that when you integrate sustainability into the DNA of the business, uh, you're adding value year after year. So, in other words, if you're conserving water and energy and so on. Uh, every year you do that, you're saving more, more and more money. So it just makes you a better business. And then when you integrate these um, these programs into like the existing programs, like you mentioned, like Lean and, and Raytheon Six Sigma, for example, it really becomes a, a part of the DNA of the company. It's not an aside, but it becomes a, a mainstream of the business. And we found over the years that you know if you look at the profit and loss of a of a company, for example, and you find that. If they have good profit and loss numbers, chances are they have good EHS, Environmental Health Safety and Sustainability Programs. It's just kind of a barometer of the business, we feel. We feel it's just an indicator of a well-run business. That's so interesting. And you were kind enough to send me like sort of an org chart in sustainability at Raytheon. And Frank, when you joined the company 25 years ago to today, how, how, how many people in the organization, how many champions and, and, and environmental evangelists and sustainability evangelists are, has the company transformed to be? And how do you continue to, to drive it as part of your DNA among a huge organization like yours? Yeah, you know, I think we've we've been really blessed, John, with having really high level management, CEO, board level support for our environmental health, safety, and sustainability programs, and so therefore we we send our uh, our performance metrics to the board on a quarterly basis. The CEO reviews them, the business presidents all see them, uh, and we have a governance structure, as I mentioned. Uh, we have a senior advisory uh, sustainability advisory council that. Uh, headed up by our, our VP and general counsel, and then we have a steering team that's also made up of vice presidents of the different organizations. And those those folks help give us direction, and then when we go to the board, we go to that senior advisory council, and um, we report our environmental health, safety, and sustainability metrics to them on an annual basis uh, face-to-face. So we've really been um, lucky to have really high-level management support through the years. That is so great. You know, we're down to the last two and a half minutes or so, Frank. I'd love you to, because you've had such a fascinating journey and you've, you've moved the needle so much at Raytheon and for the, for the, you know, for the environment and the, and your customers at large, share a little bit about some of the major trends that you see that excite you the most, whether it's the proliferation of solar or now the, um, uh, you know, uh, hybrid cars and, and energy efficient cars. What trends do you see that are coming in technology and society that excite you the most with regards to sustainability? Well, you know, we've put in some uh, electric vehicle charging stations for our employees uh, wow. Around the country, we have about 17 or 18 of them across the company, and um, that's gone real well for us. I think um, employees are are happy to have those charging stations at work. Uh, it's it's sort of one of those um, attract and retain, you know, the high quality employees, which we all want to do. We're all in a war for right. talent, right? Right. So we, we war for kind talent. of a kind of a nice perk. Uh, yep. The EV stations, and you know, we're looking forward to seeing, you know, if there's going to be major strides in the transportation area because we think. You know, with fuel efficiencies, you know, really being notched up, is there a way, is there another answer, is there, you know, is, is hydrogen an answer, or what is an answer, fuel cell cars, et cetera. Um, we're, we're excited about that, where that's all going. Um, wow. And how about solar? Is solar a big deal at Raytheon, or is it just uh, fun to see it grow in Massachusetts and in surrounding areas? Um, how do you like the, 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 the yeah. growth of solar and Solar City and great brands like that? Yeah, so we have some, you know, we've used Solar City to some of our employees to encourage yeah. them if they wanted to use it at their homes. Um, yeah. We have some pilot uh, solar photovoltaic systems at Raytheon. Um, it's been a little bit difficult for us to make the numbers work there uh, financially. Ah. So we're, we're still looking at it. Um, but, you know, there's, there's more to come there, I think, as the efficiencies improve and so on. We think there's... Uh, and the other way to do uh, to participate in the renewable energy is to buy renewable energy credits, as you know. 
Right. And we think that's another sensible approach for a business. I love it. Well, more to come sounds like what's going on at Raytheon now. As you said, you're making your 2020 goals. You've done an amazing job hitting the 2015 goals, and we're so appreciative of your time today. This has been Frank Marino. He's the Senior Corporate Environmental Health, Safety, and Sustainability Manager at Raytheon. To learn more about all the great things Raytheon's doing to make the world a better place, go to www.raytheon.com. Com. Thank you, Frank Marino, for joining us today and sharing your thoughts with our listeners. You are making the world a better place and are truly living proof that green is good. <laughs>